Today, we are going to be discussing a really hot topic. Now, with the release of the new Sonos 5s, there is now an urge to upgrade for a lot of Sonos lovers. Now, the question is, is $1,000 better spent on a pair of Sonos 5s or a pair of Sonos Play 1s or the Sonos 1s or the SL with a sub? Now, those of you who have been around my channel will know that I'm not just going to give you my opinion. Let's dive deep into the analysis of these two options and find out for sure with objective testing measures. Now, I recently did a really silly video of a gangster review of the WH-1000XM4 wireless headphones, which kind of deviates from my regular format. It was for some midweek kind of fun. Now, if you missed the video and you want to check it out, you might want to check, click here. So for today, we are going back to regular programming and as per usual, I will give you my summarized findings and answer up front. The Sonos 5s are my choice. Now I recognize that it won't be everybody's choice, but based on my own listening and testing, I find that the pair of Sonos 5s are conclusively better than a pair of 1s with the sub. But in terms of feature set and future upgradability, as well as the flexibility to move into a home theater setup, you should seriously consider the ones with the sub. So the summary is, if you are truly out for musical performance, without any possibility of you getting into the Sonos home theater setup in the near future, get the Sonos 5s. You will not be left wanting. And that is the summarized findings from the video. If you are in a rush to go somewhere, you can stop the video right here feeling assured that I have backed my recommendation with extensive testing and real-life listening tests. Otherwise, do stay around to finish the rest of the video. Now, if you like my style of presentation, do consider leaving a like for the video so that I know I'm doing it the right way. Better still, subscribe and participate in this small community that I've built up here on YouTube. At the end of the video, I've also queued up two stereo recordings of the Sonos 5s versus the Sonos Play 1s with the sub recording. You'll be able to hear for yourself what the differences in the performance are between the two setups. Now, I'd like to give a short introduction to both these systems here. If you have not heard a Sonos 5 before, you need to step inside a store and listen to one. You'll find that the sound is full and rich, and the amount of bass that's coming out of these guys may just surprise you. But in a store, they will usually only demo one piece, not in a stereo setup. Short of the Sonos showroom itself, I don't recall a retailer pairing them up in stereo for demo purposes. But that is when the Sonos 5s will blow you away and might just convert you from a wired audiophile to a wireless one. I myself was a wired audiophile until a couple of years ago, until I got the Sonos Play 5s. And the next day, second day after I got one Sonos Play 5, I went back to get the second one. I started evaluating my choice of audio equipment and I remember thinking to myself that the wireless domain is actually good enough then for it to replace all the stuff that I have at home. Now, if you had asked me to make the same decision 10-15 years ago, I might not have moved. But today, there are plenty of wireless equipment out there ready to take the place of all your cables and doing a damn good job at it. The system that we are comparing today is the pair of Sonos 5s and the alternative setup from Sonos, which is the Play Ones or the Ones with a sub. I'll refer to the Ones and the Play Ones interchangeably in this video because to me, they are essentially the same speaker with similar performance. It's just a matter of age. Now, I chanced upon a Reddit poll asking if one should buy a pair of Sonos 5s or a pair of Ones with the sub. So as of a day ago, if you look here, there are about 210 votes, 95 for the Sonos 5s and 111 for the Sonos Ones with the sub. That is about a 45-55% split and the Sonos One having a 10% lead. Now, there's an element of bias in these polls. Those who own either setup will tend to choose the ones that they have. So it might well be a poll of which setup you own now. Well, I don't have that bias. I own both the setups and I like to think that I will not be inclined to choose the one that I have over the one that I don't. The Sonos One is actually a very capable speaker in its own right, but 
it won't go to high levels and won't deliver the amount of bass that is required to enjoy music at its best. It is, after all, limited by its physical size due to the small form factor. But the setup that we are exploring today includes a sub, which is tucked down there. For those of you who have seen my videos on the Sonos Sub, you would already have known that I'm a big, huge fan of the Sonos Sub. It delivers perverse amount of bass, so much so that some audio files or video files might get a foot in the mouth when they listen to it and compare it with the setup that they have at home, costing a lot more. If you haven't yet seen my series of the videos on the Sonos Sub, you need to check it out. I'm posting the link to that playlist up here. There are probably two reasons why there is an interest in comparing these two setups. Now the first is of course the price. A pair of the Sonos 5 costs about a grand and a pair of the Sonos 1 with a sub costs about 1100 At the price range, I'll say that they are pretty comparable. If you absolutely cannot spend another $100 after coughing up 1000 then maybe you shouldn't really be spending the $1,000 in the first place. And even then, you can still opt for the Sonos One SL to knock off another $40 off the total price and bring it closer to the $1,000 mark. The second reason is that the performance from these two systems is really, really close. Now, without getting into the measurements and the details now, one would choose speakers based on the sound and whether it's enjoyable or not. And both this setup, they deliver enjoyment in space, but in a slightly different presentation. Now, let's get to that in a bit. The Sonos 5 is the bass machine. I've covered that in an earlier video here on how much bass these guys are putting out. It's a sealed design and thus the bass coming out of these speakers are a little smoother and more extended. The Sonos Sub, on the other hand, is a ported design. You, you might not know it immediately by looking at it, but if you look up or down through the acoustic slot in the middle of the Sonos Sub, you'll see the ports that leads to both the left and the right bass drivers. Now, due to the ported design, the sub delivers bass in a much punchier manner, which hits harder and probably will suit itself more to movies and home theater setups. So between the two setups, the bass delivery is slightly different. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's better, one is better than the other. So it really boils down to whether you are going to be watching movies with your setup or if you are just after musical performance. Now I have to say that both setups aren't suitable for a home theatre setup. The ones have no means of getting sound in from the TV or a video streaming device. The fives, they do have a line in port, but that introduces a delay and your experience will not be optimal due to some lip sync issues for analog inputs. So if it is just for music, my preference is for a sealed architecture as the bass response is probably smoother and tighter without a specific frequency bloat. Now, we also have to talk a little about the mid-range for vocals and treble response between the two setups. We will need to consider the driver setup differences. In a single Sonos 5, there are three tweeters and three bass drivers. In a pair, you'll be getting a total of six tweeters and six bass drivers for a total of 12 drivers. In the Sonos One, you're looking at a single tweeter and a single woofer for each side. And the sub has another two powerful bass drivers. That's for a total of six drivers for the Sonos One with the sub setup. The pair of Sonos 5 sounds a lot cleaner in the mid-range and treble department as opposed to the play ones with the sub. In a superficial way, one could attribute a smoother mid-range response to more drivers and more amps since all the Sonos drivers are all individually amped. But it is silly to say that more drivers equals to better sound, and that's not what I'm trying to drive at here. The key thing to note here is the placement of all these drivers. In a Sonos 5 stereo setup, you're setting up a very accurate stereo sound stage where the drivers are all aligned at two locations only. In the Sonos 1 setup, the bass notes are coming from a different location, and that's from the sub. So the sound from the mid-range and the treble is coming from the Sonos 1s. Now you won't be able to place the sub in the middle as subs are usually best placed towards the corner of the room. And that means that there is a subtle timing difference in the mid-range and the high frequency reaching your ears. Psychoacoustics will determine that your brain processes bass first as it carries a lot more energy. 
and thus you'll feel that the mid-range and the treble will feel slightly disjointed. Now, this is a very hard listening test. It is not something that you will tell readily. I almost feel that you can ignore this part and accept that the mid-range and the treble sounds way sweeter on the Sonos 5s. And that is exactly why I perform frequency response tests in my videos so that we can get all objective about all these. Another explanation that I can give for the better sounding mid-range and treble is actually the crossover setup. Now, there's only one crossover point in the Sonos 5 setup. You direct the higher frequencies to the tweeters and the lower frequencies to the bass drivers within the Sonos 5. In the Sonos Play 1 setup with the sub, there are two crossover points. One is within the Play 1 itself, directing the high frequencies to the tweeter and the lower frequencies to the woofer. And then one more crossover, directing even lower bass notes to the sub. So the complexity of the electronic crossover network here probably introduces some kind of distortion of sorts in that particular setup. Now I'm going to again give the win to the Sonos 5s in the mid-range and the treble department. In music listening, sound staging is critical. For stereo setup, you'll want to time all the sounds coming together nicely and you want to keep the correct distances so that you can get an accurate imaging of the recorded sound. And as I've explained above, placing a sub messes with the balance. You place the sub in the middle, it might not be ideal for aesthetic or for practicality reasons. But even if you do, it's still going to cause a timing issue unless you ensure that all the distances are the same between your ears and the sub as well as your ears and the play ones. If you place the sub to the corners, it will load the volume to one side. And remember, bass notes carries a lot of energy. And you will definitely feel that the soundstage is not entirely balanced properly. And if you are particular about soundstage, the Sonos 5s would easily deliver the correct soundstage without having to fuss about the sub placement and timing issues. Now, the other consideration is also how wide a Sonos 5 can cast the soundstage. If you look inside the Sonos 5 speaker enclosure, you'll notice that there are two tweeters at the corners angled out very aggressively. This throws sound out very effectively to the corners. In fact, when I'm listening to my Sonos 5s in stereo setup, I make sure that I place the Sonos 5s horizontally so that I'm able to take advantage of their tweeter placements to maximize the sound stage. The play ones, they have one tweeter and they won't be able to angle that in the same way to expand the sound stage. So again, I will give the win to the Sonos 5s for the sound stage. So let's get to the frequency test. Now at a point when I did the listening test between the two setups, I have not measured the frequency response from either setup. The reason is that I didn't want to color my own judgment. I'm after all human and I know that I might get swayed into giving subjective opinions to justify the objective data. So I did my listening test first and then I performed the frequency sweeps and measured the response after. I brought you on this journey first so that you can understand the difference between my opinions versus the objective data that I'm going to share with you right here. Now in the first curve, which is in green, you will see that the frequency response curve for the Sonos Play 1 with a sub pad to it. The bass extension goes down to 30 Hz very confidently and easily. And while it rolls off quite sharply after that, you can be quite sure that the system will throw out low bass that most stereo setup will have trouble matching. Now this is a powerful setup and you won't find the bass missing from this setup. I have to make a very important note here. Now you can increase the amount of bass here by moving the sub closer to the sitting position which I could also have moved the sub closer to the mic. Now you can do that because the sub is separate. So in my curve here, my sub is tucked into the corner further away from the play ones and the mic where I was measuring. So it is possible that you are hearing something completely different depending on where you place the sub. To discuss the rest of the frequency band response, I will queue up the frequency response curve for the pair of the Sonos 5s now. And that will be the curve in red. It is recognized that the Sonos 5s will generate a lot of bass, but this frequency response curve will prove it objectively and conclusively. The Sonos 5s, while delivering a softer bass than the Play ones with the sub, 
can actually go down deeper. And that base response is a little bit smoother if you compare the curves. Now you won't get that peaky mid bass at 50 to 60 hertz pen like in the Play One's case with the sub. So if you reference back to my listening test, it explains why I feel that the bass response is smoother on the Sonos 5s. Again, I have to remind you that it is possible for you to increase the bass response of the sub by simply moving it closer. But this is my setup in a normal listening environment and this is the response that I'm getting. The next phenomenon that I want to discuss here is on the mid-range. You will notice that the Sonos 5s are throwing out a lot more output all the way from 100 hertz to 1000, 1100 hertz. And this probably explains why I thought that the mid-range was a lot cleaner on the 5s. The play ones were by no means weak in their department, but there was simply more presence in the mid-range for the Sonos 5s. As for the treble, you can see that the play ones are actually extending further to the right and it's more output at the highest range of 20 kHz. I did not feel that, but probably because my hearing isn't as great as the younger version of myself anymore. What I did detect earlier was, again, a more powerful treble range and that could be explained by the higher peaks in the treble range that I actually can hear from about 3 kHz to 11 or 12 kilohertz on the Sonos 5s. Now, all said, the marginal differences in the sound quality when you actually listen to both setup is really small and it might just come down to usability considerations which I'm going to dive into next. The Sonos 5s are much larger speakers and for ideal performance, they should be placed horizontally and that means more real estate will be taken up in your room. You could argue that the sub also takes up space, but the sub can be hidden away or tucked into a corner. The fives need to be placed at ear level and it needs to be in the line of sight. It's going to be much easier to place the Sonos Play ones with the sub than the Sonos 5 pairs. Now having a sub is a big thing. The sub is Sonos most versatile product. It can be deployed with any other product in the Sonos lineup from the Play 1s to the 5s and even with the Sonos M or the port with external third-party speakers or Ms. Now buying a sub is a very useful investment which you will enjoy for many many years and you will have the flexibility to deploy and redeploy to whatever suits your setup and needs years later. The 5s, they can be used as a stereo pair or as the rear surrounds in a home theater and that's, that's it. The Sonos ones have smart assistant built in, either Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. Of course, if you choose the One SL version, you won't get it, but you do save forty dollars for the pair of the One SL versus the regular ones. The Sonos Fives, on the other hand, no such options. Sonos says that audio files don't use voice commands. So far, it seems that in terms of usability and flexibility, the Sonos ones with the sub will be the obvious choice. So while I was judging based on sound performance, do consider these usability differences when you make your decision. Now, it may have seemed that I've given all the wins to the ones with the sub combination so far in terms of usability and features, but I will also have to mention the very useful line-in feature on the Sonos 5. This allows you to pass music from any external devices, including an LP or record player, into the Sonos ecosystem. If you're so fancy, you can also hook up your PC or laptop for listening to music. Video sources might not be ideal here because there will be lip sync issues for the analog input. But the key benefit to this feature is that you can route any sound to every other Sonos speaker in the house. Now imagine you're playing the record and have the sound come out through every single Sonos speaker that you have at home. This is one killer feature and a big win for the Sonos 5s and it could possibly be the one reason that you choose the Sonos 5s over the ones with the sub setup if you have a record player. I would love to tell you that there is one easy answer to this question here. I can't give you a very clear answer for you, but I have the clear answer for myself. For music playback, my choice is the Sonos 5s for the sound performance. Then you have to ask yourself what your use case is. Do you need the line-in? Do you value musical performance above all else? 
If you have no consideration on space and future flexibility on deployment, and just one great musical sonic performance for a stereo setup, then the choice should be the sole spice. But if any of the usability cases come up, and then you have very legit reasons to choose the Sonos One or the Play Ones with the sub setup. But trust me on this one, whichever one you choose, you'll be quite happy with the performance. They're both great setups. Just ask yourself what your use case is. The last point I'd like to bring out is the genre of music that you listen to. If you're into something that is more vocal bias or if you're listening to jazz or some smoother kind of music that is not so demanding on the bass and hard hitting, then these Sonos Spice will work very well for you. If you are into the kind of music that goes tum 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 and you need that kind of bass that is being delivered via hard punchy bass, then the sub will serve you very well. So do consider this. There's no way I can tell you what the ideal setup is for you and what the choice might be for you because that is your personal preference. What I can do is to tell you what I personally chose and the signs and the frequency response curves behind these so that you can make an informed decision. I've also brought up the usability cases so that you can also decide for yourself if things like the line-in port or the placement of future upgradability is of a concern to you. If you have found this video useful, do consider checking out the other videos on my channel. I have classified my videos into useful playlists which you can check out specific to the product that you're interested in. And if my work is something that you truly feel benefits you, do consider a small contribution that you can make to my Patreon account which I've set up. I've linked it up in the video description below. Now, even if you don't, please feel welcome here and I'll love it for you just to be around and participate in the discussions in the comment section below and watch my videos. For now, I will leave you with two short clips recording the sound performance of the pair of Sonos Spice as well as the Sonos Play Ones coupled with a sub. Now, while a YouTube recording is limited and my equipment is not going to be studio great, you should still be able to get a relative sensing of the difference. I give my best effort recording and while it is not great, I do think it is something that you will not find readily on other channels. So let me leave you here to enjoy the two segments and I will see you in my next video.